Okay, so quick question for the group. Um, maybe I'll just ask Miranda because she's on camera here. Can you see my PowerPoint presentation? I can. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's great. And hopefully all of our visitors can as well. So again, thank you all of us, all of you for joining this session with us. Um, for Miranda and I, it is about eight o'clock in the morning here in Wisconsin, but we know that depending on where you're visiting us from for this session, it might be afternoon for you, it might be evening, it might be late night. So we want to thank you for joining wherever in your day this is. Um, you are at the UW La Crosse Visa Workshop. And we wanted to do this session because we know that many of you are in the process of getting ready to apply for your visa and to interview for it. And so we just wanted to give you some information about it and share our feedback and answer any questions you have because we know students can get really anxious about this. So as we get started here, we're both going to introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Heather Pearson. I'm our international admissions counselor and I'm pretty sure everybody in this workshop has interacted with me at some point because when you submitted your application, I'm the person who processed your application, admitted you to the university, issued your immigration documents and has probably been following up with you on next steps. So you probably are really familiar with my name, but this might be the first time you're seeing my face. So it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. And I'm gonna turn it over to Miranda for her introduction. Good morning or good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Miranda Panzer and I am our UWL International Student and Scholar Advisor. Um, so I work with students um, from arrival throughout your time here on campus. Um, and then, you know, post uh, beyond to help you navigate all of those fun steps. So I'm looking forward to meeting all of you this upcoming spring. All right, everyone. So jumping into our agenda here, um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So we're going to talk about the F1 and J1 visa requirements. And each of you should know what kind of visa you are applying for. Um, if you're thinking, oh, wait, I didn't know there was more than one. If we sent you a form I-20 and you're a student coming to pursue a degree at UW La Crosse, you're applying for the F-1 visa. If you are a student who's coming for a shorter term um, as an exchange student from one of our partners or something like that, um, you're going to be applying for the J-1 visa and you were sent a form DS-2019. Um, so hopefully you feel really clear about that. If not, definitely be sure to confirm with us which visa you are applying for because Occasionally, we actually do have a student who accidentally applies for the wrong visa, and it can be fixed, but it's just some extra steps. So we want to make sure you're applying for the right visa. We're going to talk a little bit about the application process for your visa, and then probably the part that causes the most anxiety for students, the interview process. So we'll go through each of these step by step. And as I mentioned in the beginning, if you have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. As I'm talking, Miranda will be able to monitor the chat and ask, you know, interrupt me and say, Heather, we've got a question on this. We will also have time at the end of the session for general questions, so feel free to ask them whenever you want to. All right, so visa and immigration information. Um, so just a few things to know about how kind of the requirements. Um, so first of all, institution certification. This may not be something you even thought about. You thought, if I get into UW La Crosse, they clearly are able to give me the documents I need for my visa. Um, the answer to that is yes, we are a certified institution. And so um, we are able to issue the documents that you need to get your visa. As a student here, you will need to be enrolled full time. And we'll talk more about that during orientation, but typically that means for an undergraduate student, a minimum of 12 credits. And I believe for a graduate student, it's a minimum of, Miranda, eight or nine. It's nine. I was gonna say nine and I'm like, oh, maybe not. So nine credits as a graduate student. And you don't need to worry right now about what that looks like. We will make sure, and Miranda especially, will make sure that you are enrolled full time because we need to document that so that you remain in status while you are here. Um, and we will also make sure that that is primarily classes that are being offered on campus as opposed to a hybrid class or an online class. So we'll make sure that you've got that full-time enrollment to keep your status. Um, English language proficiency. So for each of you, we gathered information about your level of English proficiency. This is something that needs to be documented on your immigration documents. So for some of you, it means that 
you are coming from a country where English is an official language. And so your language of instruction was English. For some of you, it means you took an English placement test like a TOEFL and IELTS, the Duolingo, and met our minimum score. So you've met English language proficiency requirements. Or if you're a student who didn't do that, you are going to be enrolled in our English as a Second Language Institute. You'll remember we also asked you to provide funding to fill out the UW Lacrosse Affidavit of Support and to provide a bank statement or a bank letter showing that you or your family or other sponsors had the funding available. And we documented that in the form that we sent you, the I-20 or the DS-2019. You'll notice we also asked you for a copy of your passport and we wanted to make sure that it would be valid for at least six months after you arrived here and hopefully even longer than that um, so that you have the ability to enter the U.S. and be here for a period of time. And then home country residency, um, just we don't collect a lot of information about that, but that will be something that will more come out um, as you reviewed for your visa that you have residents in your home country and that you're planning to return there after you're done with your program at UW La Crosse. So those are just some of the initial requirements that led to where we are now. So I mentioned that you are pursuing either an F1 or a J1 visa. And so if you have form I-20, you're a degree seeking student. If you have form DS-2019, you are one of our incoming exchange students. So a few of the things that are involved with applying for your visa. Um, number one, you're going to pay the CVIS I-901 fee. So CVIS is, I kind of view it as the national database of all the international students in the U.S. There's probably a much more official term for that, but Miranda and I are each able to log into that system and to see who our students are. So the students currently at UW La Crosse, the students who have been issued an immigration document bias and are working to become here. So um, CVIS is really that system that monitors what you're doing as an international student in the United States. So as part of the application process, you pay them a small fee. Um, it can, I think, vary, but it's usually around $350. You'll see the amount that you are required to pay when you fill out that form. It needs to be completed at least three days before you do your visa interview. So what's important to know, I've had students ask, do I have to wait until it's that close to my visa interview to pay it? So they interpret it as pay the fee three days before your visa interview. In reality, you can pay it much sooner. We actually encourage you, in case there's any issues with payment, to pay it as soon as you are able to. So you'll log on to that website we've got there, and you'll fill out the form to pay your CVIS I-901 fee. Again, at least three days before your visa interview, but you can pay it a lot sooner than that. You're going to apply for your non-immigrant student visa, which is form DS-160. So you get familiar with a lot of U.S. forms, as we talk about Form I-20, DS-2019, DS-160, you'll fill out Form DS-160, and we have a screenshot of it there. So that will be going through the process to actually apply for the visa. So at this point, you have paid your fee and you've submitted your application for the visa. You'll then schedule your time to interview. So in most cases, students are required to go to a U.S. embassy or consulate for a visa interview. In some instances, especially during COVID, they gave you other options, but I would expect, unless you hear anything differently, you should plan to go to a U.S. consulate or embassy for your interview. When you go for that interview, you're going to bring the copy of that immigration document we issued you, the I-20 or the DS-2019. You're going to bring, bring proof of funding. So when your family member or your government loan program or whoever is sponsoring you when they gave you copies of their financial records, you want to bring those with you so that you can, again, confirm that you have the funding available that you told us you were going to have. And then your UW La Crosse letter of admission. So for some of you, that was sent in the mail, so you've got a hard copy of it. For some of you, we sent it electronically, and so you have a copy of it that you can print out that was emailed to you. If any of you are thinking, oh, I don't know if I still have that letter, reach out to us and we are definitely more than happy to send a copy of that letter again so you have it for your visa interview. All right, so your visa interview. Again, we know that this is one of the things that students are most anxious about because you know that you've spent 
months and months preparing to come to the United States. You've done a lot of different processes. You've sent academic records. You've done financial documents. You've done English placement tests. And it all comes down to this interview, which is typically a pretty short interview. And so this interview determines whether you get your visa or whether you are refused your visa. Um, at the end, there should be, in most cases, a very conclusive decision. So a few things to know about that visa interview. Number one, it's going to be conducted in English. So that's one of the reasons that we have you take that English placement test. You are going to have to be able to articulate what you want to do in the US to somebody in English. If any of you are entering the English as a Second Language Institute, they're going to see that. And so they will know that your English might be a little bit more limited, a little bit more broken. Um, so you want to do your best. But for those of you coming through an exchange program to pursue an undergraduate degree or to pursue a master's degree, it will be important that you can, that you can truly articulate um, your answers and um, information about yourself very clearly in English. You want to be really positive, polite, and clear with your answers. Um, I would say, based on our interactions with students, most of the time, the, in, the questions that you're asked in your interview are pretty straightforward. Um, sometimes an immigration officer might ask you a question that you weren't prepared to answer um, or that might seem a little personal. What we want to make sure you keep in mind is you're making an impression on them that is going to determine whether you receive your visa or not. So no matter how the interview is going, be positive. Let them see that you are excited to come to the U.S. Be polite to them. Remember, they are employees of the United States government. You want to show them the respect that they deserve. And be clear with your answers. You want to be short with your answers, but really clear in what you're saying. So I know sometimes students think that the interview is going to be a long interview because the person is going to want to learn a lot about them and hear more about them and learn about their plans. In many cases, this interview is conducted within one to two minutes. So think about how much one to two minutes is. That is the time it takes to heat up a cup of tea in a teapot. It is, you know, it happens so quickly. Probably in the time that I've taken just to ask you how long it takes for one or two minutes, I've used up one of my minutes. It goes by really, really fast. So they're going to fire a few questions at you. You are going to give a few answers and they're going to make their decision. So a few of the things to think about as you're pre preparing for this interview. Number one, your F1 and your J1 visas are non-immigrant visas. What that means is you are coming to the United States for a short specific period of time. And while you're here, there's an educational goal you're hoping to accomplish. But when that is done, the expectation is that you are leaving the US and returning to your home country. So, Internally, you may have other ideas about what you want to do. You know, each student comes with their own set of goals and plans, but your visa specifically is expecting you to come complete your program and then return home. So what might they ask you? Again, they won't ask you all of these questions, probably because it's going to be a very short interview, but they're going to ask you, why did you pick this university? So in the United States, there are thousands of universities. Why UW Lacrosse? For some of you, it might be that we have a partnership with your home university and you're coming on a one semester exchange program. And so that's an easier answer. You looked through the available universities and we were a good fit based on your academic program or the relationship or something like that. Um, if you're coming to pursue a degree, what was it about UW Lacrosse that made you pick us over other universities? Was it the location, the size, the quality of the academic program, um, what was it that made us stand out above the others? Which other US universities did you apply to? For some of you, it might be, this was the only one. If you're an exchange student coming for a short-term program, you probably researched the partnerships your university had and then applied to us because you decided we were the ones and your university um, nominated you for it. So maybe you only applied to one. But for others of you, maybe you applied to two, three, four or more universities, you got your offers of admission and then you decided to choose UW Lacrosse. You'll want to be able to explain to them which other universities you applied to and then why you selected us. How will you pay for your education? 
So you'll have the financial information that your sponsor provided for you, um, but you're going to know that, that that shows partial funding. But each semester that you're here, you're going to get a tuition bill and it's going to include your tuition fees. If you live on campus, your dormitory, your meal plan, your health insurance, really make sure that you are clear about how you're going to pay for your education. A question that one of our students got last semester that caught them off guard was, how much money do your parents make in their jobs? And the student thought, wow, I should have known that, but they hadn't thought to get that information. You may or not be asked that, but if your parents are your sponsors and you're comfortable doing so, have a conversation with them and just say, you know, roughly how much money do you make in your job? Or how much money do you have in different accounts? Like just something where if they ask you more about your parents or your sponsors, you've got that information. Do you have relatives in the USA? So sometimes this question scares students because they're afraid that if they say, yeah, I have an aunt and uncle in New York, they're gonna say, oh, well then clearly you're planning to come to the US to stay because you have relatives there, visa denied. So it's really important that you are honest about any relatives that you have in the US. Um, it may be something that they take into consideration when awarding your visa, but chances are they already know if you have relatives and they're looking for you to be honest about it. Um, if you have relatives in the USA, it can be a positive thing. They can be a source of financial support, of emotional support. They can be people who you can spend time with in school breaks. But when they ask if you have relatives in the US, you want to make sure, number one, that you know if you do. So talk to your family. Do we have aunts, uncles, cousins, other relatives in the US? But also if you're asked that question, be straightforward. Do you plan to work while you're in the USA? In most cases, you are able to have a part-time job on campus while you're a student at UW-La Crosse. Miranda will actually work with you during orientation so that you understand if you're eligible to have a job, what kind of job that might be, and what kind of paperwork needs to be completed. So it is okay for you to answer that question and say, I am actually hoping to have a part-time job on campus while in the USA. What you are not allowed to do while you're here is have an off-campus job. So while your US friends might say, I'm working at the mall, I'm working at a restaurant, I'm bartending in a pub, and they're making money there, that isn't an option that you have as an international student. And so it would be important that if you are talking about working, that you know it has to be on campus. What do you plan to do after graduation? This will probably be asked most likely with our degree seeking students, not with our short term exchange students. But you want to think about how you would answer that question. Are you planning to pursue advanced studies? Maybe after you get your bachelor's degree, your goal is to pursue a master's or a doctoral degree. Maybe your plan is to take advantage of the one year program in the US where you can get some work experience after you graduate. Maybe your plan is to return home to help run a family business or to work at a company that has a really good reputation. You definitely want to be able to articulate to them why, not only why you're coming to the university, but after you're done, what you're planning to do and how this degree you're getting is going to help you with that. So with that in mind, that was a lot of information. If you're just feeling right now like you're overwhelmed, don't be overwhelmed, but be sure that you think about that information. So some tips and tricks for your visa interview. You want to be sure to articulate ties to your home country. So we mentioned that one of the things that they want to see is that when you're done in the US with your education, you're planning to go home to your home country. So what would encourage you to do that? Those might be things like family that are still living um, in your home country, a job that you're hoping to get, the financial prospects, um, that you might own or will inherit, you know, saying, you know, if, if you're going to inherit a family business or, you know, if there are investments, things that will basically say it is in your best interest to return to your home country. You want to think about what those are because they're going to want to see why when you come to the United States, when it's done, you'll still be compelled to return home. You want to speak for yourself. And sometimes this is new for international students. Sometimes you have parents who have been able to take care of you throughout most of your life. So they've been able to speak on your behalf, to take care of 
legal matters and educational matters for you. For the visa interview, this is something that you need to be prepared to do on your own. So you don't want to bring your parents or your family members with you to the interview. The officer really wants to talk to you. So if you show up and you say, my dad is here and he knows what I'm going to do, so he's going to answer the questions, and then you just sit there. They're not going to have a good feeling about your ability to be independent and take care of yourself in the U.S. But if you're able to come on your own, whether you are 17 years old or whether you are 35 years old, if you can show up and articulate for yourself why you are applying for this visa, that's going to make a better impression on them. And then even though in the session, I may not always be concise, you want to be concise during your interview. So the officers are doing many, many interviews during the day. And you probably saw that when you signed up for your visa interview, right? You probably thought, I can probably get an interview next week. And then you looked and visa interviews were weeks, if not months into the future. These officers are doing many, many interviews every day, day after day. So the interview is going to be short and they really want you to come in and have concise answers, concise being a really short and well thought out answer. Again, that's going to help the interview go smoothly and it's going to help the officer really quickly make that visa decision. Know, know your program and how it fits into your career plans. So sometimes a career, sometimes a track, you know, is really straightforward, right? If you are coming to pursue a degree in marketing, it's really clear that, you know, you're going to probably work for a company of some sort doing marketing and, you know, you know, kind of the, the activities that take place in marketing. But what if you're doing a degree in communications or English or psychology or other programs where there are a lot of different options upon graduation? You want to be able to tell them, I'm coming to UW La Crosse to pursue this particular academic program, and this is how it's going to benefit me. Um, know how that degree and that major are viewed in your home country. If you return home to your home country with a degree in economics, what kind of career options does that leave open for you? If it's computer science, what kind of company would you work for? You want to be able to talk to them about the research you've done. Something to keep in mind, and this is a harder one to address, not all countries are reviewed in the same way. One of the things that Miranda and I have seen frequently is there are certain countries where it seems that there's almost a 100% acceptance of visas. So, you know, students feel pretty confident when they go in for their visa interview, they're going to be awarded the visa. We see other countries where it's almost the opposite. We see students go in well prepared for their interview and their visa is refused. And we see that among a number of students trying to get into UW La Crosse from that school, from that country. So one of the things that the immigration officers are going to look at is the history of other students from your country and their behavior. So if other students have done the things that we've just articulated they should do, if, if previous students have come to the U.S., pursued their education, taken advantage of the opportunities that were available, but then when they graduated, returned home or maintained legal status, that speaks well to more students getting visas. If previous students from your country came to the U.S. and didn't pay their tuition fees, didn't complete their programs, fell out of status, remained in the country illegally, that starts to determine a pattern and less students in the future from that country sometimes are awarded visas. It's not fair, right? It doesn't feel fair that you should be judged based on what other people have done. We did want to mention this though, because sometimes you can do everything right and do the best visa interview you can and think, why didn't they give me my visa? Um, if, you are, if you are refused a visa, there are options to be reconsidered. And so know that it isn't necessarily a final no, it's a point in time. So if that happens, we hope that all of you go for your visa interviews and everyone gets their visa. But if you are refused a visa, First of all, don't argue with that officer. It's not gonna change their mind, even though you are sad and angry and frustrated. If you start to argue with them or yell with them or try to negotiate with them, it's not going to change their answer, but it might have a negative effect for a future interview you might do. Um, what you can ask them is, 
why was I denied a visa? In some cases, they will tell you, we didn't see enough evidence of this aspect. Um, and they might give you ideas for what you might be able to do in the future to have a different decision. So if you're able to get any information or advice from them, we encourage you to do it. If the officer simply says, you're denied a visa, I don't have anything to give you, you've just been refused a visa, accept it, thank them for their time, even though you're frustrated and angry. And then after you leave the interview, contact us and just let us know about the experience and we can talk through it with you. So in terms of arrivals to the US and to UW La Crosse, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Miranda because both of us remain in your life for a while here, but where I was really, really present as you um, applied and got admitted, during your time at the university, Miranda's gonna be that face that you see during arrivals and orientation and going forward. So she'll talk through some of these next steps. So once you've successfully obtained your visa, we want you to schedule your um, flight and submit your arrival information. And that helps us better pick you up. So a part of that is going through the port of entry. And when you're going through the port of entry, you know, you're really excited and you're packing all of your things. You want to make sure that you carry your passport, your I-20 or your DS-2019 in your carry-on luggage. Please don't put that in your check bag. Um, you, you need it to enter through Customs and Border Protection. Um, when you are going through Customs and Border Protection, be prepared and ready to provide your documents um, that you might receive additional questions like, oh, where are you going? What's your major? Um, and so you just want to make sure you're answering in a calm and respectful manner. Um, and then hopefully you've submitted that arrival information so that we can pick you up from the Lacrosse Airport or Lacrosse Amtrak or Lacrosse Bus Station. Um, and your official arrival dates are um, January 17th and January 18th. Um, if possible, we would like for you to arrive on one of these two days so that we're able to pick you up and take you to your residence hall and get you checked in um, and help you kind of get set up for the rest of the semester ahead. During the arrivals, um, we will you know, pick you up, bring you to campus, help you get settled, and just you'll have an opportunity to kind of just relax a little bit before you have to begin orientation. Orientation is mandatory, um, and that is starting for spring semester on January 19th. Um, and so you'll go through orientation January 19th through January 22nd. And we do lots of fun stuff in addition to a lot of really important information that you need to be, um, you know, learn and be prepared um, to know throughout your time here on campus. Um, so we'll do some shopping trips um, so that you're able to pick up different items that you might need to help your um, lacrosse residents feel like a home away from home. Um, and we'll also go um, through lots of important immigration rules and regulations. We'll talk about your mandatory health insurance requirements um, and just kind of answer any questions you feel that you may have to help you be prepared to start classes here um, on campus. And then our semester will start on Monday, January 23rd with classes. Um, so hopefully that during arrivals and orientation, we give you all the tools um, necessary to help get you off to a great start. So that's kind of a general overview of uh, orientation and um, arrivals. And then, um, additional next steps, if you haven't already, please, please, please apply for our on-campus housing. Um, you can do this before you get your visa. Um, if, you know, unfortunately you were not able to obtain a visa and are able, unable to attend campus this spring, um, we can cancel your on-campus housing uh, without having um, charges, but you need to let us know before the semester starts. But it's better for you to apply for housing now um, if you think you might come so that we can make sure that we are preparing for your arrival. Um, new first-year students, you should take the online math and English placement test. Please, again, do this before you get your visa. 
Um, this helps us better prepare for helping you um, in get enrolled. Um, so we work with a variety of different individuals here on campus to help you um, pick out classes and different things. And having those math and English placement tests will significantly help us in getting the best schedule that we can made for you. Um, if you are a graduate, uh, transfer, exchange, or second degree student, um, please enroll in your spring semester classes. Again, before you get your visa, do it now um, if you haven't already. And if you do have any of those questions about classes, please let us know. We did, um, Heather so kindly sent you an email with lots of wonderful information and connected you connected you with an individual here on campus. Um, so please work with them to um, complete your enrollment if you haven't already. And then you will also want to complete the student health survey. Um, this health survey is a lot of really great information to help our um, on-campus student health center help keep you healthy and safe during your time here in La Crosse. Um, and it is required of all new students, not just international students, it's also required of domestic students. So please take some time to complete that student health survey. Again, this is also something you can do before you get your visa. So if you're hanging out waiting for your visa appointment, these are some really great additional steps to check off your list. Um, and then once you've successfully obtained your um, visa to attend um, UWL, please um, you know, move forward with booking your flight and completing our UWL arrival form so that we are best prepared to welcome you to our campus. And then you'll see at the bottom of the slide, there is a link um, for additional information for admitted international students. It's a very handy tool to help answer some questions that you may have. Um, it provides a general outline of um, information that we have shared today. And, and like I mentioned, arrival and orientation, our official arrival dates are January 17th and 18th. Again, we'll pick you up and bring you to your um, on-campus residence hall. If you live off campus, um, we will not be able to pick you up from the uh, airport or Amtrak or bus station. Um, so be, please be prepared to book a taxi or um, Uber or Lyft um, to help you get to your off-campus accommodation. But as a reminder, all new international students that are first years um, that are um, First years exchange students, you're all required to live on campus. Graduate students, you do have the ability to live off campus. Um, and then our orientation, like I mentioned, our fun time together um, runs the 19th through the 22nd with your first day of classes starting on January 23rd. All right, everyone, that wraps up our session here. Um, Miranda and I both want to really thank you for attending the session. We hope that you got a lot of good information and some good takeaways from it. Um, I have my contact information up there. You're obviously welcome to contact me or Miranda, but I'm the one who really takes you through a lot of the next steps that we just talked about. And so you've got my email address there. You've also got my WhatsApp number. So feel free to reach out if there's anything that I can do to assist you. And with that being said, actually, I'll go back to see so my contact information there. Um, we now want to open it up to any questions that you might have. So um, again, 